Hello and welcome to our first lesson for Wings using Google SketchUp. As soon as you open the program, you'll see a screen that looks something very much like this. And you might actually have a little 3D man here. I've deleted mine, but that's okay. The very first thing I'd like you to do is to go up to View and under Toolbars to click Large Tool Set. That'll give you a lot more tools besides the one that open at the top of the page. It's quite likely that you only have a couple up there and most of the useful ones you want will be here as well. When your program opens you might have a whole bunch of other little toolbars that look like some of these. If you want you can tidy them up the top. If you close them or any other toolbar you can always get it back later on by going to view, toolbars and then ticking the ones that you like. Okay Google SketchUp is a 3D CAD modeling software. CAD stands for Computer Aided Design and 3D of course is three dimensions. So compared to doing something on Word where it's all 2D, Google SketchUp is completely 3D, just like a 3D movie you might see. To help us navigate this 3D world, you might like to get to know some of the camera tools. The first one is the Orbit tool. We click on that, and now as we click and drag, it will look around in our 3D space. The next one is the Pan tool. This will move it from side to side or up and down. It's like grabbing and dragging the screen and moving it sideways to where we want it to. The last one is to zoom in and out where we click and push the mouse in or out and it shall zoom. If you're lucky enough to be using a mouse, you don't actually need to click on any of the buttons up here. The mouse wheel will zoom in or out. Clicking down on the mouse wheel we'll put it in orbit mode and holding shift and clicking down on the mouse wheel we'll do the panning from side to side so SketchUp lets us draw different shapes in 3D just like that one, that didn't, one didn't go out too well the trouble is it gives us so much freedom that sometimes just like this shape here it can go a little bit wrong so we'll delete that the first thing I'd like you to do is to go up and click on this icon. If you don't have it, you can go to Tools, Work Plane, New Plane. I'm going to put in three points. We're going to put on one on the origin, one on the green line, and one on the red line. And then it's very important, we're going to either double click or press enter. And what it's done is set up almost like a big page in 3D space that'll let us draw on to keep what we're doing flat because anything we want to do in 3D we really want to start flat at the start. Now some different tools that I'd like you to get used to using one is a rectangle tool, draw some boxes the next one is the circle tool you might like to draw a nice circle off to the side the next one is the polygon tool now it looks like a triangle but you can see it's actually drawing a hexagon. We can actually change this by typing in the number of sides we'd like and then the S letter and then pressing enter. So if I go 3S, it changes to a triangle. If I want five sides, a pentagon, 5S, enter, changes to a pentagon. So I'd like you to do 3S and draw a triangle and then I'd like you to come over somewhere else and do a hexagon, 6X six sides and draw that in. Google SketchUp with this little bar down here will let you type in a lot of things as you're going. Say you want to do a square that's an exact size. Once you start to do it you can type in the measurements. I might want it to be 100 comma 100 so it's 100 tall 100 wide. Hit enter and it goes to that exact size. That'll work for pretty much everything you're drawing. Okay, now that we've got some 2D shapes, actually we might do one more with our pencil and I'd like you to do some sort of custom or freehand shape. We've got three ways to do that. The pencil, the arc tool, where we click the start, the end, and then where we want the curve to be. And the lucky last one is the freehand tool, which will just follow the mouse. Okay, you'll notice as I joined up from start to finish that I got this nice 
feel here. It fills in grey to let me know that I have a complete loop and the next stage we're about to do is going to work. The main tool you use to make things 3D is called the push-pull tool and it's up here. We click on that and we click on a surface and we simply drag it up into 3D. Just like that. If we want something to be the same height, we start dragging and then hover the mouse over another shape. You can see that it snaps to that height, or that height, or that height, or even the circle height over here. Very, very easy to use. What I'd like you to do now is on your circle to draw another circle or another shape of your choice on the top face, and then go to the push pull tool, click, and you can either go higher from here, or you can actually click down and it will put a hole through the middle of the shape. So pick one of your shapes, draw another shape on top and do a hole. You might also like, if you're having fun, to do another shape that extends even further out. Now it doesn't work just up and down, it'll work sideways as well for any of these. We can adjust these at any time, just like so. So what I'd like to see is a range of 3D shapes with some bits added, with some holes. And once you've done that, we're going to do one more 3D thing, and that's to do some 3D text. So we'll click on that, and a box should come up asking us to put in some text. I would like you to put in your name, because we're going to use this to prove that your work is in fact your work. If you want you can change the font to something else as long as it can actually be read easily and we're going to click place and it's going to come up 3D text and pick somewhere nice and obvious where you can see it and now we have 3D text. We might right click on our plane and go to work plane and delete all which gets rid of that which just leaves us with our 3D things off in space. We're almost to the end of our first tutorial. One more little thing we're going to do is to click the paint bucket tool which will load up a whole bunch of materials. Now we've got some colors here and then it works just like MS Paint where we can come and click on some different things but if we come up here we'll also find that we've got actual materials. So it might be a brick building with tiles. You might find that you've got some metal objects. You're having a brass ceiling effect. There's even some natural ones such as water where you can make things look like they have water on top and some of them even make your objects a little bit see-through just like that. So only one step remains after you've had a quick play at that. That is to position the screen so you can see your name clearly. And then I'd like you to go to File, Save As. And then save it. Go to your USB and navigate and save as Exercise 1 dash your name and click Save. That will save a copy on your USB of this file which you can open up later on and edit or work on which is what you'll be doing the whole time as you design your shoes. For the purposes of showing this exercise however we would like you to go to File, Export, 2D Graphic and what this does is take a picture of the screen and once again you're going to save it as Exercise 1 dash your name. That second one, the PNG or the JPEG, is what we would like you to upload to McMoodle. So as we're marking it, we only need to look at a picture instead of opening up all of your files one by one to see your work.